Today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Edward Byrne Jones and some of the techniques that he used in his cartoons in the Perseus series in Southampton City Art Gallery. Next week I was meant to be giving uh, a talk about the Pre-Raphaelite techniques at the Russell Coates Art Gallery and Museum in Bournemouth for an exhibition, a joint exhibition which we've done with them called uh, Beyond the Brotherhood, the Pre-Raphaelite Legacy. But unfortunately the gallery is shut at the moment. So instead I'm going to give a little talk to you today about Edward Byrne Jones. Thank you. So Edward Byrne Jones was born in 1833 and died in 1898. He was an RA, an elected member of the Royal Academy. The Perseus series, which tells the story of the Greek hero Perseus, was commissioned by the Right Honourable Arthur Balfour, MP, later the first Earl of Balfour, in 1875 for his house in Carlton House Terrace, London. Byrne Jones worked on the series from 1876 to 1885, but only four were completed as oil paintings, which are in the Staatsgalerie in Stuttgart. The cartoons are executed in gouache, which is opaque watercolour, with chalk additions on paper laid on linen canvas. A cartoon is the final stage, preceded by a series of preparatory sketches in which an artist synthesises his final vision. It is the basis for the final painting, normally executed in oils on canvas. Malcolm Bell, in his book Edward Byrne Jones, A Record and Review, printed in London in 1892, speaks of the gradual crystallisation of the floating vision in his, Byrne Jones's mind, into designs done and redone in pencil, chalk, watercolour, in detail, and at last in a full-sized cartoon. In 1877, the maximum size sheet available for brown paper was 53 inches, so the five-foot cartoons would have required two or three pieces. Byrne Jones would have needed a way to keep his paper upright on the easel and is known to have purchased three strainers covered with linen and brown paper whose dimensions exactly match those of the first three Perseus cartoons. Fortunately, the Perseus series blind stretchers have been identified as original and retained as they can be extremely effective in delaying the development of crackalia. I'm now going to show you another of the cartoons in the Perseus series because Byrne Jones actually didn't execute, didn't actually paint the cartoons in the order in which they're presented. So one of the first cartoons that Byrne Jones actually painted was this one which is called The Doom Fulfilled. And Byrne Jones took a long time trying to get his composition correct. He started off, the figures were much smaller and there was a lot of landscape in the background and little houses. And he actually changed his mind on numerous occasions to end up with this much simpler composition. It would be very interesting from a technical point of view to have this work of art on paper x-rayed to see if we could see Byrne Jones's initial composition and initial thoughts. A grid would have been superimposed over the earlier designs. Preparatory drawings and watercolours can be found in the Tate Britain collection. Here you can see an example of a study from Andromeda, which is chalk on paper in the Tate collection. Death of Medusa 2 is unfinished and white chalk lines can be seen where Byrne Jones has squared up the cartoon. This enables the artist to keep the correct scale as he enlarges the smaller sketch. So if you look closely at the cartoon here in the bottom left hand corner, you can see lots of white chalk lines where Byrne Jones has done this squaring up technique. Cartoons normally drawn to scale and then filled with colour using gouache offer us a good idea of the finished oil painting. They are produced to allow an artist to ascertain the correct dimensions, perspective and colour. Philip, Byrne Jones's son, recorded. It was my father's almost invariable custom, after he had roughly sketched the plan for a picture, 
and at the same time that he was making studies for the model for various details, hands, feet, drapery, etc., to draw out on brown paper the same size as the intended canvas, an elaborate scheme and colour for the picture he was about to paint. This preliminary design or cartoon was usually drawn in pastel or watercolour, often in a mixture of the two, a medium he found convenient for rapidly giving a general idea of the effect he wished to produce. This was the only way in which he cared to employ pastels, and he no longer sought to achieve such highly finished works as is usually associated with this material. Burne Jones was the only pre Raphaelite who experimented with different mediums, particularly favouring gouache even for large scale works such as the Perseus series. It is said that because the smell of turpentine made him feel sick, he preferred working in watercolours. He used recently invented watercolours, applying thick paint fresh from the tube with stiff bristle brushes. Thomas Matthew Rook, Burne Jones's studio assistant, wrote in his memoirs that he let as much as a fortnight pass in between applications of layers of paint. As early as 1860, he had been bolstering watercolour with gum, Arabic body colour and varnish, as well as experimenting with gilding and surface pattern. He broke down the barriers between drawing and painting in his radical use of body colour and metallic pigment in combination with pastel chalk and other more traditional media. He looked to his early Renaissance forefathers, especially Botticelli, for inspiration. Under the influence of his closest friend, William Morris, he developed the craft of painting. Atlas turned to stone and the death of Medusa I were not completed in oil paint. The death of Medusa I, also known as the birth of Pegasus and Chrysior, was intended to be a two-dimensional gesso plaster panel, which explains its very different composition. It is highly detailed, its lack of perspective defying a sense of space and creating a vision of an unreal world. Pegasus is drawn with meticulous attention to anatomy, illustrating Burne Jones's outstanding draftsmanship. It also illustrates the extraordinary confidence in which he uses his limited palette of silver, i.e. in Perseus's sword, steely grey, blue and tawny hues. Pegasus's wings are gilded and there are gold reflective surfaces in his flanks, emulating early Renaissance practices. Now, unfortunately, in this reproduction, lovely as it is, you can't see all the subtlety of the gold in this particular work of art on paper. So I would encourage you, once Southampton City Art Gallery is reopened, to come and see these works of art in the flesh, because it's only then that you can really appreciate how beautiful they are. In March 1875, when Burne Jones surveyed Carlton Gardens, he informed Balfour that as the light was too harsh, the windows would need reglazing. He wanted the walls repanelled in light oak and an oak ceiling inserted, also reducing the light. The paintings were to be hung in a band to emulate the triumphs of Caesar by Mantegna at Hampton Court. He saw his paintings as part of a decorative scheme, again in emulation of early Renaissance interiors. The ensemble was to be lit by candles. Burne Jones was fascinated by reflections, as can be seen in the touches of gold in the doom fulfilled, in Perseus's armour and the hilt of his sword. These highlights also are present in Andromeda's hair, and there are sinuous lines in the background, which would have shimmered in the light of candles in a similar manner to that of a gilded Renaissance altarpiece in a church. Burne Jones wished to display his works in environments where they could be venerated, akin to a medieval worshipper on pilgrimage. And again, I would really urge you to go and see this particular gouache is on display at the Russell Coates Art Gallery at the moment. And it's only when you're standing in front of the work itself that you can see these very delicate touches such as the gold in Andromeda's hair and the little um, wavy lines in the background. Because of their unfinished state and the abstract landscapes, 
The cartoons are among the most arresting of all of Burne Jones's compositions. They have an unearthly, ghostly feeling. Perseus' Finding Medusa is a dynamic composition, powerfully executed and handled with astonishing freedom. The fragile beauty of these cartoons is not matched by the finished oil paintings.